happy Wednesday and as promised I'm going live right now 12 p.m. Pacific time to chat with you guys about fear I know a lot of you have big goals and dreams and it seems that fear holds you back holds you back from going after those goals and dreams so let's talk about it um so if you're just joining shout shout out below like one of your fears what it, what is your fear what is stopping you from going after your big hairy scary goals hi Courtney um, if you're afraid like what are you afraid of what it what is the fear that's holding you back what fear do you feel right now when going after your goals and dreams um, so comment below I want to hear let's let's have a discussion hi Rachel Okay, so first I want to talk about a little bit about the thought process of fears. And really what fears are is it's the negative contem contemplation in our minds. Like we're negatively contemplating all these negative things that can happen. And we just keep replaying them over and over and over and over again in our mind. Um, hi, Kristen. Um, Kristen says, looking like a goofball, looking dumb. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Amber. What are your fears? Comment below. Let's... Let's talk about them. So really these fears, like Kristen just said, she her fear is looking like a goofball. Her fear is looking dumb. So she keeps replaying over and over and over and over and over and over and over again in her mind that she's gonna look like a goofball, that she's gonna look dumb. Um, hi Dave, hi Sarah. And so she just, we just keep replaying it. That is what fear is. We, we grab onto something that we're fearful of and we replay it over and over and over in our minds. Rachel says her fear is going live equals fear of judgment. She's getting better though. Okay, so she has this fear of going live, fear of judgment, and just keeps replaying it, right? Keeps replaying that fear over and over and over again. Okay, so basically what fear is, now that you guys understand, we like, we hone in on our fears and we keep focusing on them and we keep giving them energy and we keep giving them a reason to be alive. We keep giving fear reason. Um, the thing is, is this is really in your face, sorry, I'm not trying to be the bearer of bad news, but it's bad, it's bad mental, like, management. It's bad fact, it's bad management of your mindset is what fear is. I know, not what you guys expected, right? And I'm going to help you, I'm going to help you overcome those fears. So Dave, um, Courtney says she fears judgment. Dave says... Fear is letting his challengers down and not doing as good of a job as his wife has done and building her business. Yes, he knows he compares. Um, Dave, I'm so glad you brought that up. Something I was talking about with someone yesterday, and we, oh, I have, my notes are upstairs on this, but it was um, focus, oh, I'm going to have to get back to you. On, I'll, I'll type in what we talked about yesterday because it was something about focusing on um, Goodness, I forget. I'll have to get back to you. It was really, really incredible, but it was it was definitely talking about that. So once you understand what fear is, right? We just talked about it. it's bad management. It's bad management of our mindset. It's bad management. We're giving fear more energy. We're giving fear more life because we continue to focus on that fear. So once you understand what where the fear comes from, which we're going to talk about, there are three main three main areas of what is causing fear. So we're going to talk about those things. But first, you have, to, you have to identify the fear, what type of fear this is, because once you have an understanding of the fear, and you have that, like, once we understand something, we gain confidence in it. Once we gain confidence in something, and we practice that, we gain more and more confidence, and then we come, become competent at it, right? So I've become confident and competent in overcoming fears. But first, we have to know what those fears are, Right? We have to understand them. We have to understand why we have these fears and then how to overcome them. So I'm going to give you three ways today. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Jen. Oh my gosh, Jen just joined us. Talk about pushing fears, guys. She just quit her job. She's going full-time beach body coach, moving to San Diego, her dream, and picking up her family. Like, Talk about overcoming fears, right? How hard is it to just leave your full-time job and move to your dream spot on the beach? She has a little beach house. Super exciting. Congrats, Jen. So she, I'm sure she had tons of fears around that. Lots of fears. Especially when you start out as a coach. Lots of fears. So we're going to talk about those three things. So number one, number one fear is loss pain. Meaning the fear of loss. 
So a lot of times we focus on what we're going to lose. So in Rachel's case, she said that her fear was fear of, of judgment, right? So we're fearing that, that um, we're, maybe we'll lose friends. We're fearing um, maybe that people are going to think badly of, of us, right? So loss pain is, I know when I left my full-time job, what a lot of people told me, um, they were trying to insert their loss pain on me. I didn't want that. But they were trying to insert their loss pain on me. And their fear for me was that I would lose medical benefits by becoming a coach. I would, I would lose my medical benefits and I would lose my 401k. That is what everybody was worried about. I don't know why, but they were afraid of that loss for me. So what we have to do is we have to actually switch that loss pain. If the fear you have is a loss pain fear, um, you have to switch it, switch your focus. Now that you know what it is, switch your focus to what do you have to gain? It was always for the loss pain was always really funny for me because when people would tell me that I was going to lose medical benefits or 401k, I was like, do they not see what I'm going to gain? Do they not understand what I'm gaining here? So that's what I want you guys to do is actually flip that over and think of what do you have to gain? I want you to focus on what do you have to gain? For me, I was like, medical benefits? You mean that $300 that my company pays or whatever it was at the time? Because now it's probably about $300. Back then, I think it was only like 100 the $100 that my company pays for medical benefits, yeah, because I'm losing $100. Like, in my mind, I was like, the gain is I'm going to be able to pay my own medical benefits and make way more than any boss has ever paid me, right? And when people would say, but you're going to lose your 401k. Oh, you mean like my 401k that my company matches at 5%? How about I just save a million dollars myself? Like that was the gain, right? And I know these are big gains because that's how big my vision was for my life. But really, whatever that loss pain is for you, you need to flip it over and look at the gain. What can you gain from that? And um, let's see. Yeah, Jen, I'm so excited for you. Um, so that that is, you know, number one. That's one is the fear of loss, the loss pain. What is your, do you guys have a loss pain? Do you know, is there something right now that you're afraid of going after, you're afraid of doing? I know a lot of people when it comes to fitness, for example, they do, they're like, wait, I'm gonna have to work out. Oh, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna have to work out. They don't think of what they have to gain. They don't think of how they're gonna feel better on the inside and the outside. They don't understand like, is that girl really just that excited and enthusiastic about life all the time? Yes, I really am excited and enthusiastic about life all the time. Because fitness has given that to me. There's so much more that goes on in my mind and in my body by feeling myself with healthy foods, by doing a workout every single day. See, most people see the loss. Like, I'm going to lose time with my kids. People tell me that all the time. I, I don't have time to because I need that time for my kids. I promise you that time you take away from your kids and you work out, you're going to gain so much more. So you have to focus on what you're going to gain. Um... Dave, think about how hard you had to work to get that minimal gain, right? Okay, so uh, Michelle said, going back to work for someone else, quit waitressing last March to work on herself. Awesome. So that's number one. Number two, does anyone have any questions on loss pain? Does anyone have any questions on number one? I, Courtney says, I think the thing is we want that instant gain. So the minimal gain or the temporary loss is immediate and is more apparent. But you have to re-switch re your thinking, Courtney. You have to be able to switch your thinking and your mindset to not focus on the loss, but to focus on the gain. What if I did this? What is the gain going to be? Uh, Rachel, heck yeah, I've recently experienced that change. Life is so much more vibrant. Can't imagine not working out and being healthy. I totally agree. So number two, number two, totally get it. Awesome, Courtney. Uh, I hear that from moms all the time. I don't have time. As a former single mama for seven years who ran and worked out, I can shut that down right away. I love it. And isn't it above to deciding what loss is worse? Yes, yes, Dave. So yeah, what, what loss is worse? Like, it's definitely, but you want it, instead of focusing on the loss, focus on what you can gain from that, right? Because the gain always outweighs it. We sit here focusing on the loss and the fear of this loss, 
but really we're not happy with where we're at, so why aren't we doing something to change it? So number two, number two is process pain. And process, the process of, of change. The process of change is hard. You guys hear me say that all the time. I did a post yesterday on it. The change is hard. It's hard. It's hard because we're changing our habits. It's hard because we don't necessarily know the entire process, right? Change is hard. Does anyone have a fear about change being hard, about the process of it? I know for me, this was a pain that I did feel. This was a fear that I did feel, process pain. When I got started as a coach, I had these big goals. I had this goal of, of um, not, not of losing. Like I wasn't afraid of losing my medical benefits for my job like so many people wanted to tell me. Um, I wasn't afraid of losing my 401k. I wasn't afraid of losing my job. I wasn't afraid of going out on my own. Um, I wasn't afraid of losing those things. But for me, the process pain, I didn't actually know like what it was going to take to make that happen. So I had to learn, I had to get confident and competent. And so I remember looking and being at zero. I had no clients yet. I had no coaches on my team and I had this big vision, this big dream. And the process just seemed so daunting and so long. So for me, the process was so daunting and long that that was my fear, right? The process of change was my fear because I didn't know what it looked like. I didn't have confidence on what I needed to do every day to make it happen. But I had to flip that. I had to flip that fear and I had to see challenge as something that's good. Challenge is something that's exciting. Challenge is something that brings vibrance to our life. Challenge is something that brings us enthusiasm because when we're challenging ourselves, we're growing. And when we're growing, we experience life in just a whole different way. And for me, that was, that was really what I had to start focusing on was I focused on, okay, what am I going to gain out of this? And I have to keep going. And with every challenge, just realize you're going to get that much better. You're going to grow. You know, in college, I would go, I would go to class. I would take a, you know, I would learn. I would take a test. I would pass the class. I would go get my job. And, and it was just like little, little milestones along the way. But I wasn't growing as a person. I wasn't challenging myself fast enough. And so what I love about the process is that I get to challenge myself however fast or slow I want to go. But we have to change our thought process, our mindset to see challenges as good because they are good. Because I see people out there that are just going through the motions day to day that don't have challenges that, and, and life still gives them challenges. Life gives them challenges that they don't want. I would rather seek challenges that I do want to grow into the person that I want to become to make those goals and dreams happen. Okay, so um, Dave says, follow your heart and your spouse will see and even feel the difference in you. I don't know what, what Wendy said, so sorry, Wendy, my, my phone doesn't show me anymore. Your comment's gone. Um, when your spouse sees the positive impact this lifestyle is having on you, it may encourage them to join too. Pro oh, you know what? Wendy, I think I know what, you're, what you commented. I'm not for sure because I can't see it. But for me, when I got started in health and fitness, I come from an obese family and my family wasn't on board. My family didn't jump on board. It took three years of me, of me coaching, my mom watching me drink Shakeology every day, doing my workouts every day, posting about them every day, um, you know, trying to encourage her. And she contacted me and she said, I'm drinking my Shakeology and I'm going on a walk and I just burst into tears. It took her three years, and she still wasn't perfect. It still wasn't like her way of life, and she's come around so much, so like now she, you know, she works out more regularly. She takes care of her health. We're always like talking about nutrition, and whenever we go out to eat together, she always orders what I order. Um, she's come so far, but really, when Wendy, when it comes to helping other people change, we can't force change on anyone else. We can't control anyone else. The only person that we can control is ourselves, and that's okay. Um, I don't care if it took me five years, six years, seven, eight years for my mom to come around to focusing on her health and her fitness and her nutrition and taking care of her body. I would do it for another five years if it meant her watching me for five more years for her to take that step into her, her fitness and nutrition. Guys, there are plenty of you that have been following me for five years that have not jumped in on your fitness and nutrition, and that's okay. 
um, I will still be here five years from now, inspiring, taking care of my own health. Um, and so Wendy, that's all you can do. You can only control yourself. Um, Chrissy says it's been a year of her husband watching her working on herself. It took her, her husband a year of watching her work on herself. And guys, Chrissy, how much weight have you lost? Putting you on the spot because I was blown away by your transformation photo yesterday. Um, so Chrissy, if you're still on with us, I'd love to have you comment how much weight you've lost because girl, you were an inspiration. And then Laura, that's her biggest fear. Following a dream and her mom and her family is not on board with. Guys, I love that. I'm so glad you brought that up, Laura. I, um, when I got started as a coach, my, um, uh, my family wasn't on board. Um, you know, a lot of people just thought I was completely crazy. When I left my full-time job, my grandma, and my grandma was my best friend growing up. Like, I talked to her every day after school. I would call her every day after school. I would spend my weekends at her house. And when I left my full-time job, she said to me, but you can get it back, right? You can, you can get that job back, right? Um, and I know that might not sound painful to you guys, but when someone you love and care for so much and you've actually proved to them that this works, that this coaching thing is not just a fad, that this coaching thing is not just a hobby, that it's a real business and you are earning more with coaching than you are in your full-time job and you left your full-time job and your grandma, like your best friend tells you, but you can get your, your full-time job back, right? It crushed me. It crushed me. Like it, I replayed it over and over and over again in my head. Guys, it's your dream. It's not for your family or friends to understand. You have a passion. You have a dream. You know what you want in your life. God, the universe, whatever you believe in, gave you that dream for you, not for your friends or family. That's your dream to go after. They don't have to understand. But you know what? If you go after it and you give it all you've got and you believe in yourself before anybody else believes in you, people will start to believe in you. People will start to see your passion. They'll start to feel it. They'll start to feel that energy. They'll be inspired. I had a friend the other day. He just messaged me out of the blue and he said, Christy, I've been watching you for years. I just left my full-time job and I'm going into business for myself. He sews um, like boat covers and all sorts of different things. And he's like, I'm moving. I'm going in. I'm diving all in. I'm going for it. Guys, I have chills. When I read his message, I got chills. I had no idea that he was following me. He's a friend of mine. He probably thought I was crazy. Who knows? But six years, almost six years later, six years in April, and he is going after. He's pushing his fears aside. and He's going after what he wants in life. We only have one life. You go hard after what's important to you. Your friends and family who don't support you right now, when they see that you're all in and you're really about this, when they see you three years from now proving to them, that you're healthy and fit and you're helping other people, they'll be on board. They'll get it. It just takes time. And other people don't have to understand it right now. You do. You live for your dream. You do it for you. Um, I love it. Amber says, I'm in this and I just have a gut feeling this is what I'm supposed to do. Um, I love it. Yes, Wendy, I love everyone's input. Thank you guys. And it's so, oh, Dave says, it's no surprise why so many people fail, not just at Team Beachbody, but any business like this. People put their shit on and we believe it and quit. Don't believe them, believe in you. Okay, I love what you just said, Dave, because it really reminds me that for me personally, I don't take advice from people who I wouldn't want to be living their life. And I know that's kind of harsh, but I do not take advice from people who I would not want to trade shoes with. <laughs> I don't take advice from them. I, I make it a practice. I am going to take advice from people who are more successful than me. From Because what it comes down to is a lot of people want to tell you what is possible for you, but really that's just a, a reflection of what is possible for them. That's not truly what is possible for you. That's what's possible for them, and they want to put that on you. And I know it's tough, but I promise if you dive into changing your mindset, focus on personal development every day. It's not enough just to work on your fitness goals and your nutrition goals. 
You have to work on your mindset. See, it's really easy. You guys can look at me and say, that girl works out. I always, like I walk into a grocery store and people are like, you work out, huh? And I'm like, yes, I do. Um, people can tell, they can physically tell that I take care of my health. They cannot physically tell if I'm taking care of my mindset, right? So what is the thing that people take care of? They'll take care of their aesthetics, their fitness, their nutrition, because others can tell, but they don't take care of what's going on in between their ears. They don't take care of their mindset. And it's so important that we take care of our mindset as much as we do our physical body, because People are going to try to tell you what is possible for you, but you have to have belief and be strong enough in you that that's okay if it's not possible for them. That's what's possible for them, not you. And that takes time and that takes growth. And that's why we're going through these, these three different types of fears so that you can identify these fears and start changing your mindset towards them. So we're just talking about process pain. Oh, Katie down 65 pounds and changed from the inside out. Oh, that's amazing girl. Congratulations on all your hard work. Um, Courtney just said, I really lack with personal development and starting to show it's my March goal to crush personal development. Um, Courtney, personal development is really where you gotta, you gotta work on you. You know, everything, if you want to inspire other people to change, you gotta, it starts with you. It starts with working on you and working on your mindset. Um, so process pain, we were just talking about challenges are good. They're exciting. They're enthusiastic. Like they bring vibrance. They help you grow. They help you get stronger. Things that I dealt with when I was a coach in my first year used to tear me down. When haters would come at me, people would say negative things. People would tell me I couldn't do this. Like I just kept focusing on what I had to gain, like in the lost pain section. I just focused on what I had to gain and that was kind of how I drowned them out, but it still hurt. But now when people say things to me like that, I've gone through so many years of personal development, I know it's a reflection of them and has nothing to do with me. So number three, um, and once again, if you're just joining us, welcome. Um, you can start from the beginning. Once we're done with the recording, it'll post as a, once we're done with the live, it'll post as a recording and you can go back and listen to the beginning so that you get everything. Number three is outcome pain, outcome pain. And this is the pain, this fear of what if it's not better? What if I put in all this hard work and it's not better? What if I think that like this is going to get better, but it really doesn't? What if the grass isn't greener on the other side, right? And so you just keep focusing on that. Remember, with every fear, it's bad management of your mental faculties. That's what fear is. You're letting that fear go around in your head instead of replacing it with the positive and what you have to gain. So in this sense, you have to stop. You have to stop focusing on what if it's not better and focus on what you have to gain, the growth you have to gain. Visualize your dreams and then becoming reality. Visualize what everything you have to gain because you have so much to gain. I see so many people stopping themselves from going after their goals and dreams because of a fear of losing, because of a fear of the process, because of the fear of I can't do this, it's not, I'm, it's not going to be better. And they stay stuck, they stay where they're at. They don't even go after what they actually want in life. Guys, that's the, my biggest fear. I don't wanna stay stuck in a place that I'm miserable at because of what might not or might happen. Like I wanna at least say to myself, you gave it your all and all the way until the day I die, I want to give it my all to go after what I want in life, right? So you have to focus on the joy, the good. You have to learn to master your mental faculties. You have to learn to master your mindset. You have to focus on what you have to gain. You have to focus on all of the challenges being good and joyous and enjoying the struggle. You have to focus on where the outcome will take you because if you're just focusing on like, well, what if it's not any better? Guys, you're just gonna stay in the same spot. You're not going to change. And that place you're in right now, I'm sure it's not any better. Okay, so um, Jennifer, fear of, they were right. Uh, sorry, I don't know what you said before. Um, Kate, success is one step out of your comfort zone, not spending another day at war with yourself. I love that. It sounds like someone does personal development. Okay, so we just went through three different types of pain. And guys, 
the more we focus on pain, I have notes right here so that I kind of kept it on track. <laughs> the more we focus on pain, the more we stew on that, the more we're just gonna stay stuck in our fears, okay? So my question to you is I want you guys to realize what type of pain you have, what type of fear you have. Realize what type of fear it is, and then I want you to refocus your mindset. So instead of sitting there going, what if, what if, what if, what if this doesn't happen? What if this goes wrong? What if, mm, excuse me, instead of continuing to say what if and focusing on the negative, I want you to say what if and focus on what you have to gain, what you have to get out of it. So right now, um, Dave said, you're all incredible people and will succeed if you, succeed if you keep doing what you're doing. 100% fear of failure, fear of what if I give up again? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, fear of failure, right? Fear, that kind of comes to that outcome pain. The fear of like, what if it's, what if I don't get there? Or the process pain. Um, it's okay. Like, that's a challenge. I love it. Fear of failure. Guys, I fear staying the same. That's my biggest fear. I fear staying the same because no matter what, if I show up every day and do my best, my best is good enough. My best is good. My best is great. And I would rather show up and go after my goals and dreams than allow the fear to keep me stuck in the same spot that doesn't make me happy. So we all know what we want to improve our improve in our lives, right? What do you guys want to improve? What is it that you want to improve? Is it your fitness? Is it your nutrition? Is that you want to have more time freedom for your family, more financial freedom for vacations? You want to fire your boss? Like, what is it that you want in your life? Um, Jennifer just said, my fear was, what if they were right that San Diego fails and being, and being a coach full time? Chris, help me do what you're saying. Stop thinking of what he said. Focus on the positive. Jen, I'm so proud of you. Guys, that's huge. Jen just said she is she was so scared, fearful of what everybody said was right, that she would leave her full-time job, that she would move to San Diego, and that it would fail, that she would fail at coaching. And she just left her full-time job. She just quit. I have chills all over, Jen. I'm so proud of you. I'm so, so proud of you. Focus on what you have to gain. She gets to gain time freedom. She gets to be with her son every single day. She gets to run on the beach every single morning. She gets to sip her Shakeology watching the sunset if she wants. Or go sit on the beach and watch the waves in the morning while drinking her Shakeology. Because she overcame that fear by changing it and focusing on what she has to gain, guys. Okay, so what, what do you want to improve in your lives? We all want to improve something. What is it that you want to improve? And why aren't you doing it? Why aren't we doing it? Because life is short. Life is too short to sit here and live in a false fear, like this fear that is holding us back from something, but really our fear is just bad mi mindset management. We're allowing ourselves to replay over and over and over and over again all the negative doubts, fears, crap, junk that people have fed us, people that are telling us what is possible for them, not what is possible for us, and we just keep replaying that on repeat. Would you talk to your kids that way? Would you tell your child, no, you can't walk. You just fell, so you can't walk. You suck. You, can, you can't walk, so you're definitely not going to run. Would you speak to your children like that? So why do we allow ourselves to continue on replay speaking those same types of thoughts to ourselves? It is so important that you go through and you retrain your brain to say the positive things. When I start doubting myself or saying negative things, I grab a piece of paper. I have a notepad like next to me at all times. Like there's two of them over there on my counter. You probably can't see them. And if there is a negative thought in my head, I pull out that notepad and I start writing down all the positive things, all the positive goals, all the things that I'm going after, anything I can to retrain my brain and get it out of that negative mindset real like it's replaying in my head. Um, Wendy says, I want to get better at being me unapologetically and doing what I know I'm meant to do without feeling like I have to justify it to anybody. Do it, Wendy. Retrain your brain with those positive thoughts, those positive affirmations, and go for it. Because, guys, when you're just trying to please everybody, you end up 
you end up letting the most important person down, yourself, because you're not being true to who you are. You're not even being you. And as I said on a video the other day, when you focus on being you and doing what you feel and doing what's important to you, the people that love you will love you harder. Those haters, they hated you before for some silly reason. They just didn't have a reason to tell you why they hated you because you never put yourself out there. So when you put yourself out there, there are going to be people that reject you. There are going to be people that hate you. But you know what? I did a high performance coaching academy last year. And one of the things that Brandon Burchard said was he said, he, and all, all across the world, all of the things that he's done, all of the seminars and events that he's done, Rooms full of thousands of people. He will say, how many people have rejected you to the point that it has just been so negative and it's hurt so bad? How many people? And he had everybody, you know, raise their hands. Five people, six people, seven. On average, on average, in a room full of a thousand people, six people rejected each person. On average, six people had, six people reject them. Six. Six that like, that were just haters that were really jabbing at them and really made them feel bad. Six people. And then he asked how many people actually cheer you on. And every single one of them could come up with at least a thousand people that would cheer them on. So are you going to let those six people stop you when you have a thousand cheerleaders? Are you going to let those six people that might hate you, that might reject you, that might care what you, what you like for some reason, they just don't like who you are, but they didn't like who you were in the first place. You just, they didn't say it out loud. Are you going to allow those six people to stop you when you have a thousand people cheering you on? Because there are a thousand people that will support you. There are a thousand people that want to hear what you have to say. There are a thousand people that will be in your corner ready to fight those six people, right? They get to love you harder because you're you. Amber, love that idea. Write down positives when negatives are thrown at you. Kate, keep sharing plant seeds. No's turn into yeses even a year later. Do you? Yes, and I know Dave was saying that earlier, comparing himself to his wife. Guys, we all have something special. We all have a way to connect with people. I am not the best. I will never be the best at anything. I've gotten over that. That doesn't mean I can't be my best. That doesn't mean I can't help the people that I'm surrounding myself with. That doesn't mean that I can't make an impact on one person at a time. There's somebody out there who will connect with you, who will connect with your story, who needs you right now. And they're not gonna connect with me. They're not gonna connect with the person that you're comparing yourself to. They're gonna connect with you. But if you're too afraid to be yourself and you're not putting yourself out there, that person is missing that chance. They're missing that chance to connect with you. They're missing that chance to build that relationship with you. They're missing that chance to change their life. Are you going to deny them that? Because of six people who might say something bad about you? Because I know there's a thousand people that are looking for someone just like you. Um, awesome. So... Guys, what do you want? I'm gonna wrap this up. What do you want? Comment below. What is it that you want? Why aren't you doing it? Identify that fear, flip it. Identify your fear, flip it. Focus on the gains, focus on what you have to gain. Focus on the joy and become a master at your mindset. Become a joyous master where you're focusing on joy all the time and what you have to gain and all the opportunity that's out there. So what is it? Oh yes, Leticia, high performance coaching was the best. It was even better with Brendan Burchard in person, I promise you, he's amazing, I love him. Um, what is it that you want and what are you going to focus on? What is it? Comment below, I wanna hear, what do you guys want? Why aren't you getting there faster? Gut check. Courtney just said gut check. Yeah, why aren't you getting there faster? Guys, it's up to you. Life is short. Life is so short. Go after what, what makes you come alive. Even if it's scary, even if there's fear, even if there's gonna be people that hate you, they're gonna hate you anyways. I have plenty of haters. But because I have plenty of haters, I have plenty of people that love me hard. And allow people to love you hard. 
Hannah says, I want to change a thousand lives, retire my hobby, and have the time and financial freedom to travel with my kids. Girl, you can do it all, one person at a time. You help one person at a time, and you will retire your hubby. Go find one person today, tomorrow. Fight hard for those goals. Fight hard for those dreams, because they can become your reality. Um, Amber says, I want to quit my job and have time for freedom. And she's going to do it. The girl just rocked her goals. Rocked her goals in February. I'm so excited.